So here we uh, have the, the bag itself. This is the uh, Chobi 13 inch. They do it in two um, uh, different models. So it's the 13 and the 16. I can tell you that this easily fits in. If you've got uh, an iPad Pro 12.9, with the folio case and that's the apple one with all the keyboard uh, that does fit in here with room to spare so you're definitely going to get that 13 inch um, uh, macbook in here or uh, macbook air that will easily fit in Go into the 16 inch uh, macbook i know the dimensions are pretty tight but that won't fit in here. I do have a 16 inch, so you would have to go to the next size up bag if you do have a 16 inch MacBook. Uh, but let's go around the bag. Uh, in the other uh, sections, you'll see me loading the bag in its different uh, formats as well for travel and lastly for photography. But let's just do the overview first. So let's start with the shoulder strap. Here's the shoulder strap. You might think, well, it's just a shoulder strap, but they have done a good job with the shoulder strap. It's well padded, you can just see there. Uh, it's very thick and on the side it's got the non-slip material. They've decided to put the pad in the centre of the strap and then stitch in the straps coming down to the bag. I prefer it done like this because when this is on your shoulder it's not going to slide up and down through the actual strap itself. There's nothing worse than that. You know, I've done it so many times, you, you put it on your shoulder, you're walking down as you keep swinging it to get stuff out. And then by the time you, um, you know, come to take the bag off, this is normally down here and your shoulder is actually on this as well. So I like that they've decided to sew it into the middle and then they've made two adjustments either side so you can always keep it in the middle no matter what size you are then obviously the fastening it's a good good fastening through the loops i'm going to take the shoulder strap off to show you the rest of the bag so you can just detach it if you want to I'll just put that to one side and that is good a lot of companies sew it straight in and you can't take it off maybe you uh, don't want it on and you just want to use it as kind of the the briefcase style now the handles again the thought about this um normally handles they're they're stitched in and they're one unit so when you come to get in the bag you've got to open them up like this and they'll always stay and they get in your way but they've put kind of this hinge on each of the straps. So the strap itself just flops down and flops down. So it's totally out the way of the top of the bag. I think that's important because when you're accessing the top of the bag for your camera gear and lenses, it's good to just have them out the way so you can get straight into uh, the bag as well. So I do like that functionality. We'll start with the sides. So on here, there's like a, a neoprene um, pocket there. It's not too deep. I would say this neoprene pocket, you're gonna be putting sort of your uh, your AirPods in there. That's ten to what I put in there. Uh, your M your can't get it out. Your AirPods uh, will fit in there. Apart from that, not much else. It's not very uh, wide. Um, you couldn't put a water bottle in there at all. You could put your keys in there maybe as well. They would fit in there. On the other side, you have a loop. So if you do have a, a water bottle with uh, a hook attachment, you can just hook it onto there. Or you can actually put a pouch on there if you want to drop that uh, water bottle in there or some other things as well. Moving to the back. So you do have... Uh, a pass-through here so it's a luggage uh, pass-through so if you're at the airport you've got uh, kind of your suitcase you can slide that onto the top as well or if you're like me if you've got your bigger camera gear um, I've got that in a, a, a wheelie suitcase with all my videography stuff in I can slide this on the top uh, so that's all with me there and then the back compartment this is a double zip to come around 
and then it opens up so you can see it's like a clamshell as well uh, it does have expandable sides on it so nothing's going to fall out and this isn't just going to flop down then inside i'll just show you there it does have a pocket uh, dust on the inside there that's for your ipad so that can fit in there and like i say in the pocket my ipad uh, pro 12.9 does fit straight in there nice with a little bit of room all around it and that's even with the folio case on and then the laptop compartment is obviously the main compartment but you can also put paperwork in there now i can easily fit in the in the back my ipad pro and i can fit a games console in there and a pretty big game console as well but we'll show you that later on um, the great thing about it is that doesn't pinch uh, space from the inside of the bag so this is all sewn kind of to the outside of the bag so it's its own space as well which is a good thing uh, a lot of companies say they keep their bags small um, but when you come to put stuff in, yes, you can put stuff in on those pockets, but it's nicking space from the inside, which limits what you can actually fit into the inside, which is not a good bag in my opinion, especially when you go to put camera gear in there. Uh, then the two pockets at the front. Now, this is a smaller pocket. And like I say, I'm going to, if I can hide my face, I can kind of show you. You see here, this is the outside pocket. Well, again, it's affixed to the um, outside of the inner part of the bag, so it's got its own space. So I call this my kind of daily pocket. So if I undo this one, and then I'm going to turn this round so you can actually see I'll hide my face so it doesn't lock onto me. If I open that up like that, you can see it has got an abundance of pockets in there. So just looking at this bag, you've got two pen holders, you've got a big pocket um, just at the back here with a key loop in, then you've got one, two, three, three card pockets, you've got a zipped area pocket here, and then you've got a mesh pocket there. So I've got my wallet in the mesh pocket, um, I've got a, a small bag in there with change because you know you you go um, on these wedding uh, or assignments you park up and you haven't got any change for the parking meter so I always carry some change there I've got a pen in there I've got my keys attached there uh, I've got my car charging uh, card there because I, I drive an electric car some business cards and then I've got the fob to my um, car there I don't need to uh, keep taking that out because um, my car unlocks if I'm within the vicinity, so that can just stay in there. So this is kind of your money area and your sort of um, your daily access um, area where you've got your wallets, your keys and your business cards. All fits in there with room to spare. Then we've got the quick access um, pocket. So on the front here, there's a quick access pocket. It's a Velcro strap. And the idea, this is the full depth of the bag. The idea for that, so let me just, I'm gonna get my phone. So this is the I, um, iPhone uh, Pro Max. So the 15 version. And you can see it fits straight in there, no problem. So in there, you would probably have your passport, your phone uh, for quick access. And like I say, it is velcroed at the top, so nothing's going to fall out. Uh, I do like how they've done that. Well thought after. Then, the zip compartment. Again, we'll zip it all around. I'll spin the bag around again, because I want you to see every part of this bag. Uh, I'll hide my face so you can see inside. Abundance of pockets again. I'm going to just talk you through the pockets. So, on the back, we have got a zipped mesh pocket. That's the full depth. Then we've got one, two pockets that are the full width, but are just slide-ins. So for instance, I've just got um, uh, something slid into there. Then you've got an area, kind of the whole of the bag, which is about an inch wide. So for instance, I've just got a power bank. This is the new Anchor uh, power bank. That just easily 
just sits in there without even pushing against the bag or nicking space from within inside the bag. Um, it's all its own area. Then on this part, I've, you've got two mesh pockets down the bottom. Uh, I've actually got in one of the mesh pockets my uh, AirPods, so keep those in there. Then you've got another zipped mesh pocket here. And within there, I've got cables for charging because obviously I've got my power bank. Now the great thing about this is when I zip it around, if I just bring it to the edge there, I can actually have a cable come out to the side, plugged into the power bank, my phone is in here, and then it plugged into my phone. So I can actually charge my phone on the go uh, with still getting access to the phone without having to undo all the, the zip and everything. So um, I do like uh, that. If they wanted to take it a step further, they should have actually put a little pass through um, just there so you can push a cable through there because most people will probably put their power banks in this area as well. So there you go. That's the uh, outside of the bag itself. Uh, we're going to move on to the inside of the bag and then I'll show you uh, again what it can do. So the inside of the bag, you've got the zip just here. It's a single zip to get inside. They're all YKK zips as well, so good quality zips uh, that should last the bag a, a lifetime, uh, basically. Now, when you open the bag, uh, again, this is pockets crazy. This bag is like on steroids when it comes to pockets. We've got a good deep access to the bag. We've got um, a pocket that runs the full length of the bag there that you can throw uh, anything in. A good storage area there. It also comes with a rain cover. We'll talk about that in a minute. And then on this side of the bag, and it's going to be really hard to show you, so I'm going to see if I push it there. You can see down here, when I hide my face, you can see in there that it's got another four pockets. So basically at the bottom, it's got two pockets uh, with Velcro straps that you can put things into. And at the top, it's got two, well, I can actually pull those out so you can see, two mesh pockets as well. Um, they're quite shallow, so you can, like I say, fit cables in there, you can fit uh, your AirPods in there, um, just things like that. Maybe some change if you just want to keep it um, out of sight. Pockets galore. And then this a, ge a genius thing that it does as well. So at the bottom, you've got um, kind of the hard part of uh, the bag. Um, it's like the foam insert, you know, that makes it a bit more padded. And it's double layered. Now, what you can do with this bag, I'm going to close that up. There's another zip and you might see it just here. Okay, so... You can get this zip, and it's hard to do when you're uh, all back to front, but I'm going to uh, just pull this around and show you. If I unzip that, and then bring it up and I can show you. This bag, I've unzipped that, will expand, there you go, to there. That's two inches it expands to. And then when you expand it out, the divider at the bottom, the foam insert, it's actually doubled for a reason because you flip it over to then create a big storage area. So I'm gonna just flip that over in the bag and then I'm gonna now look at the room in there. So you've doubled that area for traveling. That is absolutely brilliant because now you can put clothes in this bag as well. And this is what we're going to do um, later on. I'm going to show you how to pack it for a city break on a short haul flight. So that's kind of the look around the bag itself. So let's just have a look at another thing as well. We've got the rain cover. Uh, this comes of it as well. But 
the material that, that this is made out of, it's called X-Pack. Now, X-Pack was uh, invented, um, if I can remember rightly, it's from a boating line and it's made uh, for sales. So the two people that originally invented the X-Pack, it was intended for uh, sales on uh, a boat, um, racing kind of uh, boats. Uh, and then it progressed into bags. Uh, people started making rucksacks out of it because of the durability, because uh, it's 100% waterproof, it's very versatile, it's very strong as well. Uh, it's not just going to rip and fray. In fact, you won't get any frays at all from this bag. Um, there's just nothing anywhere for it to fray. One thing I will note, the build quality is phenomenal. Uh, I've had bags from multiple um, uh, companies, I'm not going to mention any names, and there's always loose threads sort of around uh, on the areas of the bag, but this doesn't have any of that, I mean it is really well put together, the zips open very uh, nice and smooth, I will say when you first get it the zips are a bit tough because the bag's new, but once you started opening it the, the zips do just slide nice and easy. Um, so, so yeah, so uh, from my understanding, Guru Gear is the first camera bag company to introduce X-Pack material into a camera bag itself. Uh, um, for me, I think that's brilliant because, you know, as a wedding photographer, I'm always throwing my bag on the, the floor all year round as well. Uh, we are going to do a full uh, review on this later on and come back to it in about six months time because I truly believe that you can't call these videos camera bag reviews their first looks. Uh, I think to review a bag you need to have used it for at least six months to put it through the elements, maybe even uh, 12 months so uh, you get a better understanding how the bag lives up through all the different you know elements from uh, sun, rain, snow, whatever you want to do, travel uh, and all that. So so there you go. Oh, and one thing I do want to mention before we go on to the next section, uh, next sections, se sections um, is branding, very minimalistic. We've just got a slight branding here to tell you that it's the, the Chobe 2.0, uh, 13 inch, and then the Guru Gear logo here. And that's pretty much it. You've got laser cut pull tags on all the, the zips, which is very handy. Um, but yes, it is their second iteration of the bag. And this bag, uh, I believe it came out last year, um, sort of the middle of last year. Um, and they did it as a Kickstarter campaign or an Indiegogo campaign, and it progressed from there. Uh, and this iteration was from all the feedback that they had on their original bag that photographers were saying that they wanted. So they updated it and brought this one out. And I definitely think this is um, a step in the, the right direction. So that's it for the, uh, the first sort of look over the bag. Let's get into the second uh, stage or rather the first stage of uh, how you can use this bag. And we're gonna uh, pack it out as your daily carry. So let's have a look at that. So if you're a tech guru and uh, you want to use this as your everyday uh, carry, so this is what this part is about building it out with your essentials for your everyday carry. Maybe you're going to work and on your break at work you like to do uh, a bit of uh, gameplay on your handhelds or maybe you're just going off on your travels uh, for the day and you want to take a certain bit of equipment with you or you're visiting a customer you need your iPad in there, uh, your pen, your phone but while you're sitting in the car having a break, it's always good to de-stress and uh, play a bit of The Witcher on your games console. So this is definitely uh, worthwhile for that. So in the back, I'm going to just flick these open. We'll open this compartment in the back. It flips open and I'm just going to, I'm gonna kind of show you just in there 
you can see I have got my games console in there and I've also got my iPad in there as well. So we'll show you. So games console, this is the AO Neo uh, Kun. It's a big console for a handheld um, but it's got a beautiful screen on it. It's also a Windows computer. So if I do need to do anything on a Windows computer, uh, I can plug this in and use uh, that as well. Bearing in mind, I'm a Mac user, so uh, everything I do is on uh, Macs. And then just in the back compartment there, you can just see the top of it there. Uh, there's my iPad. And again, that is the full uh, size um 12.9 and i'm gonna just show you on the top there uh, it's actually got the apple pencil on the top and i've got a, a a moffet case that just surrounds it which allows me to put the pencil there so it doesn't drop out as well uh, and that all fits in nice and easy so that's my tech in the back but then let's just zip that up uh, but then say I'm on a train and I do want to play the games console, but, you know, I don't want everyone listening in. So in the main compartment, I'll just pull these out. I've got my uh, Air Pro uh, Max, my AirPod Max. Um, so I uh, can put them on, maybe do some Zoom calls and that. Uh, those are, are on, fit in nice and easy. And then I've got loads of space in there for my lunch. So uh, I can have my banana and my sandwich in that bag as well. And then obviously we've already done the front compartments. So uh, I've got my phone that's slid into there. Then we unzip this one. I've got my power bank. My leads are all in there. And then on this pocket, as we've seen before, I have got to do that around. Um, I have got all of my wallet and everything in there as well. And one thing to, to note about this, which is probably a bit unusual for uh, for bags. I don't know if you've been noticing, but when I do the zip, so the zips end up when they're closed here, sort of in the center. So, you know, you, you have to get the zip and open it around. But that means when the pocket opens, you've got that nice full access to the side here. So nothing stopping it. And when you close it up, then the zips meet there, meaning you can put a little TSA padlock on there because then they're not going to open up and come across. So you can actually lock all your wallet and belongings in there so no one can get in. Um, so a little bit of a security feature. I do, uh, I do like that as well. So there you go. Uh, the bag all set up as your everyday carry. I mean, to be honest with you, as an everyday carry, you're not going to really put much more than that in. Uh, your iPad, your games console, pair of headphones, your phone, wallet, uh, keys, power bank, some cables, and then maybe you throw in there, um, you know, a couple of snacks to eat, packet of crisp, a bottle of water. All that fits in there nice and easy. So I could definitely say I can use this as my uh, daily carry, whether that's commuting to and from work or going seeing a client, definitely works well for that. So uh, the next stage, I'm, uh, I'm going to nip to the house to show you this because we're going to pack this bag as though we're going on a two nights getaway and we're using it to put some clothes in along with maybe your games console to play on the on the plane as you're traveling uh, and things like that. So I'm gonna pack it out as though I'm going on a short haul uh, for this to just go underneath the seat in front of me. That way I don't need to pay any extras for uh, extra luggage going in the hold or in my overhead. So uh, let's pack this out for travel. So here we are in um, my uh, spare room and I want to show you what we can pack in this bag for uh, being uh, a kind of a short haul getaway. Now, Wizz Air, Jet 2, EasyJet, they have strict bag requirements and if you don't follow them, 
you're going to get a, a hefty little charge when you go to check in. Now, when you book a, a flight with them, it doesn't include an overhead or a haul bag. Um, so if you want to put uh, a bag in the haul, then you have to pay an additional to that. And if you want to put one in the uh, overhead, then uh, again, it's an additional charge. You're allowed one carry-on, but it's got to be uh, 40 by 30 by 20 in size and it has to fit underneath the seat uh, that's in front of you in that little area. It can be quite a pain. Now just to show you, this is that exact dimension. So this bag is specifically for uh, those airlines. It's that, them exact dimensions and it fits perfectly underneath the seat in front of you. So you might be thinking, why don't I just carry using this? Because how they've done that, they've used this really thin, flimsy material. Uh, there's nothing to this bag. You can just squash it up. The bag has no padding whatsoever. It has zero padding. Not even the handles have uh, padding. But they've done that for a reason. So you can fit the most amount in that dimensions. Which is great. Um, I've used this now for probably the last four uh, short haul flights. Uh, I've been to... Where I've been to, I've been to Marrakesh. Um, I twice using this bag worked flawlessly. I've been to uh, Pisa worked flawlessly. Um, I've been to uh, Rome, and again, all worked flawless. Never get looked at. Goes under the seat. I've never had to pay those extra fees. So if you add just an overhead bag to your uh, flight. It's normally around about between 30 and 50 pound each way. So again, makes it an expensive flight. So if you can book these flights for, you know, 30 to 60 quid, and that is it, that's all you pay, then do that because it is going to save you so much money. You're going to enjoy the travel. And I don't know about you, but I enjoy the excitement of thinking smart, traveling smart. Okay, so think smart, travel smart. Um, only take what you need, pack light, happy days. So here we've got the, the bag. I'm going to unzip it now. The inserts are out. I'm going to unzip it to um, its expanded size. So that's what we want for this. Just for the demo, I'm going to take off this strap just so it's not dangling around as I'm uh, packing it all up. So let's start with expanding the bag itself and then inside in the bag here it's got this little flip over compartment and I'm going to just get my little camera uh, and I will pop this on I can show you in the bag and we'll put it on a little screen just around about here um, so you can see uh, what this insert is like. So there we go. Let's start this recording. So looking in the bag just there, we can see we've got this hard bottom and when you've expanded the bag, you flip that over and that now makes the full bottom of the bag. So uh, very simple to do. Perfect. Okay, let's get packing. Now, um, when I'm going away for two nights, then, you know, it's going to be the old two pair of socks. Um, we've got, um, you know, two lots of underwear there. I've got two t-shirts, we'll put them in, all fits there nicely, and then I, I am going to Marrakesh in a couple of days, so I need two vest tops for uh, by the pool, so we'll get those stuck in there. I'm going to also need a pair of uh, shorts for the evening, so we've got a kind of my posh pair of uh, shorts. We need a pair of swimming trunks. Those will go in there. 
And then uh, I am going to take a pair of uh, jeans. So these are from, where are these from? These are from Spoke and they are travel jeans. So they're a, a little bit thinner than normal jeans and it allows them to uh, pack up a lot easier. So again, I can uh, pop them in there. Then I've got my toiletries uh, in there. So my uh, deodorant and things like uh, that, that can just uh, pop into there. And that's all my clothes um, in the bag. That's it with it expanded out and my clothes, no problem at all. Let me just do this camera for you so you can. Just do this. OK, so there you go. Uh, everything's packed in there. I've still got all the room down there. Still got all the room at the side there. So I've just thrown the stuff in. Uh, we can pack better than that. So I've also uh, got a plug. This is a um, travel plug. So I'm going to throw that in so I can keep all my stuff charged up. Then at the back, I'm probably going to take my iPad with me so I can do a bit of the work as time goes on when I'm on the uh, flight. So let's then pop my iPad, we will stick that in. Then I've got some paperwork as well with all the details of the flights on. So again, we'll pop that in and that's all in there. I will zip that up. Uh, and then lastly, I've got uh, my travel uh, games console, which is the uh, ROG Ally. So again, that's gonna go in there. So let me just uh, zip all this up and then I'll show you the bag once it's uh, finished and it's got everything on there. So we'll just pop that into there, zip this up with that in, um, the console, let's spin that around and pop that down there. And then we'll shut that up. Okay, there you go. That's it. Everything's in. I'm ready to travel. And uh, obviously in the front there, I've also got my phone. Uh, I've got all my passports in um, the front of this with my keys, wallet, car keys, everything like that. I've got my iPad um, in there. I've got my games console in there. I've got my power bank for charging on the go. I've got my plug to charge my power bank, my phone um, and uh, my games console, you know, if I need to. Um, everything is there, literally. So uh, not too heavy at all. If we get the handle, I'll just Perfect. Airline approved size, can go underneath the seat. It's got two days worth of clothing. Um, I've got spare jeans. If I, I don't forget, I'm wearing um, obviously jeans for going. So if I spill anything on the jeans, I've got a spare pair. I've got a, an evening pair of short chinos. Um, happy days. I don't think there's anything else that you could pick for just a, a two night away trip. And you've got all your stuff in there. So I definitely think it's a thumbs up for this bag for the short haul travels as well. Uh, if you do want to pack more, maybe that you expand this out and you have all your camera gear in here, um, depending what sort of shoot you're going on or what you're doing. And then uh, you have an overhead with all your stuff in. But me, I, I like to travel smart. So this is the way to go. An other alternative to do is have the narrow insert in, have the bag expanded, so then it'll give you uh, that width of um, freedom to put anything you want in. Maybe you just need one night's uh, uh, change of clothes. So, you know, a pair of socks, a pair of undies, a t-shirt, um, and a spare pair of jeans. That would easily fit in there with the narrow. 
uh, and your cameras in as well. So definitely a winner. Uh, I hope this section has helped you out, showing you what the the Chobi 13 inch uh, everyday bag can fit in as a weekend hopper. So we're going to build this out as a camera bag now. When you go to uh, to buy this, there's actually um, three options. You can buy the bag on its own uh, without any inserts. You can buy it with this one here. This is the narrow insert. Um, or you can buy it with the wide insert as well. So I would probably say the narrow insert is best used with mirrorless cameras. So it, it'll fit um, the, the Fuji range of cameras and lenses in, it'll fit the Olympus range of cameras and lenses in easily. I mean, they will just glide into this. And then the Sony uh, range of cameras and lenses, it will fit in as well. They'll just glide into this. Um, so I'm going to show you how this goes into the bag. And then um, I'm also going to show you uh, packing this out as well. Uh, and what actually fits into into this. Obviously you can change the dividers. Now, if you take a look on the inside, there is Velcro on each divider and it does come with horizontal dividers. So you can build shelves in there as well. So if you are uh, using this as uh, an Olympus um, user, the lenses are very small. So it means that you can put the device in and you can actually utilize uh, this area for stacking. So you can actually fit two lenses there, two lenses there, uh, your camera in there, and then maybe a flash in there. So altogether you could fit four lenses, a camera and a flash. Um, if you're a Fuji user, very similar thing because depending on what lenses you're using then you could stack them you could easily fit four lenses in there uh, a camera um, a body in there and then a flash in there uh, sony again it's depending what lenses you're using i'm using um the uh the the G series lenses, so uh, they're, they're quite uh, bigger and um, wider. So for me, I can fit two lenses in there, a flash and a, a camera as well. So I will show you how it works with a Sony, but let's show you how it fits into the bag. So I've got the bag here. Now, obviously you just push it into the top uh, the opening to the top of the bag, it is quite narrow. I mean, it does stop. It stops there. So you can see the opening just there. It is quite narrow, but this has been designed to be um, hard to push in. So it needs you need to give it a bit of sort of oomph to push it in. I'll just push it in to show you and then wing it about. Doesn't take long to get in, there you go. So that's it, it's in the bag. And now you can see the dividers are all in there. Now we've got it in its camera bag uh, stage as well. So um, let me just get some cameras and then I will show you how this packs out. Okay, so I've got um, uh, the camera, I've got three lenses and uh, a speed light. So I'm gonna put this on the top just here and I will pop these in. Speed light can just go in on the end there, fits in quite easily. Then let's get, this is the uh, 50mm f1.2, the GM uh, lens. I do have this filter on the front. Everyone asked me about this red ring on the front. 
So this is a, a Cine Bloom filter and I come from the film era of, you know, film cameras not being like so sharp. And I think digital cameras are super sharp, especially this lens. This lens is so sharp. I like to kind of dull it down a bit. So that's what a Cine Bloom does. A Cine Bloom just softens um, the, the look to it. It doesn't take away the sharpness or anything like that. Uh, it just softens that look and it's brilliant for skin as well it, it really does justice to the skin so as a wedding photographer you don't want to go through and be you know skin retouching every single image so to have this on when you're doing the portrait shoots uh, it just helps with the skin so that's another video <laughs> so let's get that in so that's just gonna uh, slip just into uh, the end there um, and another um, genius thing that I do as well, and you'll see this in the bag. So when you're using a bag like this, and I call these a top loader, you know, you're sticking everything into the top. When you open the bag, there's nothing worse than pulling a lens out, oh, the wrong lens and putting it back in. So um, there's a company, I'll put a link to them down the, uh, below. There's a company and they actually do these uh, sort of nylon stickers that you can put on your lens cap. And let me just put that in front so you can see there. You see that? So on all my lens caps for the right lenses, I can see that it's a, an FE 24mm G lens and it's an f1.4. So it tells me all the spec of the lens. So when my lenses are sitting in there, I can literally just look in the bag and go, okay, so it can't you see like that. I can look in the bag and think, okay, I just want that lens and pull it out. So that just drops straight in. Uh, there's a little Velcro shelf that I'll just put down uh, there so I can fit the camera in. Let me show you that as well. You can just see that I've put that down. Then I've got here, I'm on the Sony A1. Um, I've got the 35mm uh, f1.4 lens on there. And I do have a grip, it's the Mikey uh, grip. So again, I'm just going to, you can see the Mikey grip along here and along there, because it gives it an arc of Swiss and it just extends the grip a little bit, you know, so your pinky's got somewhere to sit as well. But the reason I'm telling you about that is it actually makes the camera, um, uh, deeper as well okay so bearing that mind uh, bear that in mind when I'm putting that in the the bag that it actually makes it uh, deeper so if you didn't have the grip on you've got a shallower camera uh, to slot in but you know it um, it does it just slots in just nicely uh, just there there you go so I'll have to be careful showing you this now don't want anything dropping out there you go there's the camera um, all in there in the bag nicely and then you know it's all zipped up that's it camera but one last thing we open the back up we get our iPad so we can do a, a bit of editing um, in between shoots that's the camera bag. Everything's in there. If I want to uh, get the camera out, literally open and then uh, the camera straight out the bag, bop, 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 shooting away. Uh, you want to get a lens out, then I can literally uh, come in here, get a lens out. If I need a flash, I can just pull the flash out straight away uh, or pop it in there. So my opinion this is a step in the right direction um it's got us covered on uh, all aspects so that's the that's the camera um gear setup so let's head over to uh, the final thoughts so there you go three different scenarios uh, for the bag uh, we've got your daily carry, we've got your travel, and we've got your camera bag. Now, 
I can't turn around and say it's the perfect bag. I, I've had this bag for a week now. Um, I'm going to use it for the next six to 12 months solely and make sure that it does do everything. As my uh, daily driver, as my travel bag for um, being my hand luggage on the, the planes as well, uh, whether that's for travel, whether it's for work, and then as my camera bag as well, um, doing weddings with it, doing uh, events and headshots. And then I will come back to this video in six months, 12 months, and I'll let you know if it is the ultimate bag. But from first impressions, I would say that this is hands down the best bag of 2024 and i know we're only in february i'm filming this in february but i'll go one better it's the best bag of 2023 that i've also had as well and i've uh, i've been using um two other bags throughout 2023 great bags i'm not going to get into names uh, but this is by, by far the best and most versatile that I've actually owned to date. I've always had to have a man bag with all my wallet in and um, you know, my bits and my bads that I'll use every day. But then that couldn't fit my iPad in if I was just going to see a customer. So I changed bag bags to a different one that was slightly bigger. Um, if I was going somewhere and I knew I was going to be gone the, the day and I wanted to put my um, games console in there, then I would go to a bigger bag. So. I do think that this solves that problem. It is a bag you can use every single day. Um, as a travel bag, like I say, the dimensions of it, it's perfect for going underneath the seat um, and it'll give you a bit of room as well. And then finally, the camera bag, I think it's got all of that covered. The bag's made of this X-Pack material, which is, it's very light. It's extremely light, extremely durable. Um, obviously you can go to their website and you can see how much bag, uh, how much the bag weighs, but I'll tell you now that this is one of the lightest, uh, camera bags, daily carry bags that I have, uh, that I have owned. Um, and that's a good start because it's going on your shoulder as well. You, if you have a bag that's already in the pounds before it goes on your shoulder, then you are going to cause damage to your shoulder with having it on there every day um, because your posture doesn't sit right. Because if you've got a really heavy bag, then you counterbalance, you'll lean this way, which your spine actually moves that way and you're crushing the vertebras on your spine in a way that they're not designed to, uh, to work like throughout the whole day. You're meant to walk straight with your back straight. So it's important to be like that. Posture is important uh, when you're a photographer. Trust me, uh, I know this um, uh, uh, through having a very bad back. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to give this, what am I going to give it? I'm going to give it a recommendation. It's going to have the one more recommendation. I'm going to give it a four star. Um, only because I haven't fully tested the bag. First impressions, crushing it through the roof. Uh, you can buy the bag on its own without any inserts. You can buy it with a narrow insert. You can buy it with a wide insert. The company itself, I, I don't know a massive amount about uh, Guru Gear. Um, maybe I'm going to give them that four star because of who they are, because Obviously, if you want to buy the bag, you can go to their website and buy it on their website, uh, or you can go to B and H and you can buy it from B and H. Now, those are the only places that I really know that you can get the bag from their website or B and H. If I was to pick one or the other, I'd probably go to B and H and I would buy it from B and H only because B and H um, they ship worldwide. Their shipping is uh, really reasonable even to the UK and they can put all the taxes and everything on the price for it coming uh, in. If you go to this company's own website and you purchase from there, then 
you are going to get custom charges if you're bringing this into like the UK or so forth. And I do think that their postage is, um, is, is quite high. So they use a, a DHL two to three days. Um, so when it's coming from the States, you're going to pay that premium uh, for that service. So my recommendation is go to B&H and buy it from B&H. You can buy the bag, the inserts and everything from, from there. Uh, and B&H, really reputable um, uh, camera store. If you're in New York, you can walk in and you can buy this bag off the shelf at B&H. I go to New York all the time, so happy days. If I want a, a new insert, I can pick one up from there. So yeah, so I, this is going to have a one mo four star, and I think the only reason for um, uh, not having a five star is just the functionality of how to get the bag uh, in your hands. So there you go, great bag. Really looking forward to putting it through the uh, paces. Uh, one last thing I am going to uh, throw on. You can also buy other uh, products from them as well. Um, this is uh, obviously the Guru Gear. Uh, they call it the Tembo, T-E-M-B-O, the Tembo 12. And again, it's all X-Pack material. Um, it's all YKK zippers. It's all weather sealed all around here, which is great because if you drop this on the floor, it's not going to uh, let any moisture or anything in. And this is a memory card holder, but um, let's just open this up. I'm going to open it up there. Opens up. You've got your memory cards in there, but this has got a wealth of uh, memory cards. So you can see there, it's got a pocket here. I've actually got a hard drive in there. I've got one of the Samsung uh, T7s in there. So I back up on the go. You can watch my other video on how I back up on the go. I'm not going to give that away. You'll have to watch it. Uh, then I've got one SD card in there just to show you uh, how it works. Uh, and this will fit uh, an SD card in, a CF card, um, uh, the Type A card as well. All of those will fit in there. You've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So you've got twelve card slots in there, hence why it's called the Tembo 12. And then on this side, there's like a neoprene pocket. And in there, I've got my uh, my lead as well. Uh, so I can plug in, obviously, my hard drive. Uh, all zips up. Nice little pocket. I do like that. Matches the bag. Goes in there uh, quite easily. And like I say, if you drop it on the floor, you're not going to get moisture in there. You don't need to worry about your cards. Uh, because it's all weather sealed coming round and it's actually quite thin as well. So going in your pocket, you've got a little loop there. So remember in the front of the bag here, you add that key loop. If you want it to be uh, uber protective, then you can loop that on and put it on the inside. So it's not going to get lost and it's always with the bag. You can pick those up from the website or from uh, B&H as well. So there you go. I think I'm going to end it on there. I've raveled on long enough. I've shown you what the bag can do. Uh, I appreciate you watching. So please do hit that like button. It really does help. Uh, and uh, share the video to others. Again, it all helps me create this content. And I'm back. I've had a year off now from creating content, um, refocusing my business and um, what we're doing. So make sure you uh, subscribe and check out the rest of the videos that are coming. I've got another bag to review that's just sitting over there on the, the shelf. Um, so I'm uh, dying to get that filmed and get that up there. Uh, thanks for watching. Check back soon. See ya.